Hi, welcome to Any Gold Dad. I'm Mark. If you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe and leave any comments down below. Today we're going to be looking at the start of the scenic work on this layout. So I'm going to start the scenics in this area. So the plan for this area is we have two main lines here and two main lines here. These lines here descending down into the fiddle yard. So we're going to have some high background scenery here going on up into a hillside, coming back down perhaps a river coming down off the hill, coming down under this section. So this line here will disappear into a tunnel and come out somewhere over there. This line is descending down to the fiddle yard, so that will go through a tunnel mouth. This line will look more like an embankment. I'm going to incorporate some of the fiddle yard here. So using these tunnel mouths, build a hillside, an embankment, just to display part of the fiddle yard, make it part of the scenic area. Say so the river will come down, hopefully, underneath here. Uh, there will be a bridge or a viaduct or something constructed here. The rear two lines here will be on an embankment going around into the station. And of course, the rear two lines that are going down to the fiddle yard, they won't be seen. They'll be hidden behind uh, the scenic break. So I've already constructed this level here. This is basically so I can build the scenery on top to protect the lines underneath. I'm going to build another one lower down so it's above this height to protect this track here and then the scenery will sit on top of that. So that's my next task so I'm going to get on with that and then come back. I've got some covering now over the lower level tracks. This will protect them as I build the scenery up on top. Same as I've done on the upper level here. Just scrap bits of wood left over from making the layout. Some uh, two by ones and nine mil ply. You can see it's all made up of different scrap bits. Just cut them up to fit. It doesn't have to look pretty because it's going to all be hidden by scenery. So now we'll move on to the next step, which is using this Celotex type board. We're going to take the backings off it, cut it and carve it into shape for the hillside. Here I've started stacking the insulation board. It's been held together by using bamboo skewers. You'll pick these up in any supermarket. So I've started layering them and stepping them back a little bit. So what I'll start doing now is just getting a knife and just carving a hillside. And then at a later date, I might put another level on to slope it back further. As you can see, I got more pieces in. Uh, I've been using the craft knife here to cut away. Just take your time doing it, cutting it away, shaping it how you want. Also, uh, use a dust mask. There's going to be tiny little fibres that come off this that aren't terribly good for you. You can see here, I've dug a channel out of this one for the river. Now the plan is, I will be covering this with plaster of Paris. So really I'm just using these as formers to give me the shape. As you can see on the floor, it makes quite a mess when you're cutting this up. But all these little pieces can actually come in handy when you're putting the plaster of Paris on. Because you can put it in under the plaster of Paris to give you more shapes. So I'm going to carry on doing this, uh, getting the shapes in for over here for the embankments. And you can see for supporting these in place, I've screwed these bits of wood. And that way the pieces of arrow board can just sit across there like that. Once I'm happy with everything, I will uh, glue it in place. I'll use a, a PVA glue just to hold it in place because once the plaster goes on it, it'll be rock solid and it won't move anyway. You can, with some of these faces, paint them as they are, but you'd need to so uh, seal them over with a PVA uh, coating first and then that'll stop any paint seeping in. As you're working on this and shaping it, make sure you run your trains around, your biggest carriages, locos, that sort of thing, to make sure you have enough clearance. Bearing in mind that if you're putting plaster of Paris over it, you need that extra bit of clearance. So every so often, run a couple of trains around, just make sure everything's clear. I'm going to carry on shaping this. It's important that you take your time with it. It can be quite time consuming, but you need to get it right for when you put the plaster of Paris on. So I'll carry on with this. Next week we'll come back and we'll look at putting the plaster of Paris on and getting the final shapes in place. 
So please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Leave your comments down below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.